Why should you start investing as early as possible? Now I've seen a lot of people set aside investing for their retirement while they are still young. The reason? Well, to enjoy life, maximize traveling, and spend a ton of money buying the things they weren't able to buy when they were still a student. That why should they waste their time planning for their retirement in their 20s when it's years away? Yes, there's nothing wrong in enjoying life, but like they say, too much of everything isn't good. You have to have balance in your life, especially when it comes to planning your finances. The thing is, what happens to most people is, they only think about planning their finances when they are in a tight situation. Some when they are loaded with debt, they enjoyed too much of their youth buying the things they can't afford, then ended up paying the consequence in their 30s or 40s, and no one knows if you'll live healthy up to your 60s or you won't experience any big problems that require a large sum of money. That's why for me, ignoring your finances while you're young is a big mistake. I hate what a lot of adults here in our country advise young people. Go enjoy your life while you're young. And the biggest BS I've heard is, don't think about money. You can't bring that to your grave. You only live once. Why can't I travel when I'm in my 30s or 40s? I know I can die anytime, but that doesn't mean that you YOLO your life. And the cycle of being financially stupid and it starts now. For me, the best lesson I've learned from all the books I've read is from the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. It says, pay yourself first. I tell you that understanding this principle alone sets you on a good pathway to being successful in the future. Paying yourself first means before you pay your bank, your credit card, debts, the electric company, your phone services, your Netflix subscription, etc. You have to pay yourself first. This means when you get your salary, you take a portion of it and set it aside for savings and investing, which we will discuss later on. The golden rule is 10% of your income. Now before you go on complaining 10% is too big, I don't care. You have to budget your money. If your money isn't enough, then remove some of your monthly expenses to get to that 10%. It is not the 10% you set aside for yourself that will adjust. It is your expenses. So if you can no longer afford that daily Starbucks coffee, then brew your coffee. If you're the breadwinner and you're the one taking care of your family's finances, then you budget wisely. You have to set aside that 10% for yourself. Now I think I will hit a nerve here, especially for those traditional Filipino families that milk their children of money and make their children their investment. Well, if you're that person that is being milked by their parents, you have to learn to control and budget for them. No reasons. Why? Because you have to be that turning point. You have to be that change that will get you out of that cycle that uses their children as their investment. I always tell myself, I will never ever take money from my children in the future. I will consider myself a failure if I let that happen. Just imagine, how can the next generation accomplish a lot of things if they are too busy feeding the previous generation? So before we continue this topic, I want to state that your life is your responsibility, no one else's, not your children or anyone. That's why planning for your future is very important to prevent this cycle from ever happening. So now that we clearly set the rule of taking a cent of what you earn and setting it aside for yourself, no excuses, no matter how small your salary, take a cent out of it. Think of it as taxing yourself. Now, then what? We go to the next crucial step. It is to use the most powerful force in finance. This is compounding interest. Yes, you don't just save your money. Saving money can only go as far, especially if you have a low salary. It is actually almost impossible to change your life and the next generation if you don't use compounding if you have a low salary. Why is that? Well, whenever I plan, I always want to see it, a clear map to it. So if you just save money, for example, you earn 15,000 a month, so a ten of it is 1,500. Even if you save for 40 years, it will only be 720,000. Just imagine, it wouldn't be enough to buy a brand new car. Even if you double it to 3,000, which is 20% of your income, it will only be 1.4 million. And the worst part of it, it doesn't earn you anything. It will deplete and deplete every time you take money from it. But what if there's a way to take money out of your savings but never touch your original capital? Sounds like a scam, but it is very easy to do. And this is where compounding interest takes effect. Using that 1,500 pesos, if you earn for example 6% interest, in 40 years, your money would grow to 2.6 million. Imagine, 4 times the amount compared to savings. And here's the best part, that 2.6 million is earning you 156,000 pesos a year. This is more than what you're saving, so even if it take 156k a year, you wouldn't be touching that 2.6 million, it is giving 13,000 a month. This is like your second SSS pension. 
I know a lot of you would say, I save for 40 years and it will only give 13,000 a month. Well, what do you expect? You're only saving 1,500 pesos and would you rather not have this 13,000 a month in your 60s? You would be a fool if you rejected this money. I'm sure that most of the population doesn't get this amount in their retirement. It may look small, but this is better than having nothing or just relying solely on your SSS pension. The biggest problem I see in the vast majority of Filipinos is we rely too much on a single pathway to success and that is through establishing a business or going through the corporate ladder. Let's face it, not all of us are gifted to be successful in business or become the best employee out there to get the highest position possible. The worst part, most are relying too much on overnight success and instant gratification and in the end, they are left with nothing. I know this pathway is so slow, but it is so easy to do. Just set aside a portion of your income and then invest it. And if this is too small for you, then try to increase what you invest and save. Let's say you doubled your savings to 3,000 a month. That will be 5.2 million in 40 years and would give you 313,000 a year worth of passive income or 26k a month. Imagine that if you add this to your as a suspension of more than 10,000, then I think this would give you a much more comfortable retirement. Increase it again to 6,000 a month. That's 10 million 40 years from now and would give you 626k per year or 52,000 a month. This time, this would even be enough to let you travel one to two times a year. So with this idea, you already break that cycle of having to rely on your children when you grow older and it just takes this amount of money to do it. Then you can just imagine those who are saving more than 10,000 or 20,000 a month. If you're wondering where to get 6% interest, well, we already have Pagibig MP2 that boasts high returns than 6% and is tax-free. And if you want even higher returns, then you can study investing in stocks. REITs alone has an average dividend rate of more than 6% and there are strong companies here that even give higher than 8% per year. And the best thing about it is, no matter how high your dividends are, you are only taxed 10% in stocks. Can you just imagine the rich that have more than 100 million invested? They are earning millions from dividends but are only taxed 10% and the majority is blaming them for getting even richer. Well, I think a lot of multi-millionaires here in the Philippines are just good where they put their money. With the advancement of technology, you no longer have any reason not to secure a good financial position in your retirement. If 1,500 pesos a month can give you this, then increase your savings further. Stop making excuses that you're the breadwinner. You have so many responsibilities in your family. There is always a way and I've shown you that even small amounts can give a big boost in your retirement pension. Now before we continue, as I mentioned, investing in stocks. If you're following my channel, you know I'm a stock investor, a dividend investor, so I invest in stocks for the long run so that one day I would be able to retire off of my dividends and one platform that has helped me tremendously in managing my stocks and getting updates, research and tools about stocks and so much more is my broker Dragonfly. Their platform stands out above the rest with its design and functionality. I tell you back then, I thought it doesn't matter which broker you use as long as it's legit. But after I've used Dragonfly, it has drastically improved my investing journey. In just one platform, I get news. This way I can stay updated about the stocks I hold, a screener to easily identify which companies I need to research, and their newsletter and research are a must read for investors. You can learn so much from it. So if you want to try this platform, sign up using my link below and both of us can get up to 1,500 depending on your initial funding. If you'd like to learn more about this promo, there's a link below as well. Thank you and back to the video. So just a recap of the two crucial lessons we have discussed. Pay yourself first and compound interest. By understanding these two principles, you are already set on a good path. You just have to be consistent enough to maintain it for a long time. That's why for me, you have to automate it. Like don't let that money go into your wallet. Let it stay in your bank account and immediately transfer it to your chosen investment vehicle. Don't tempt yourself by letting it sit in your wallet or savings account for too long. And the best part about this, you can even venture into other vehicles like maybe establishing a business because since it's so easy, you have time for other things. This for me is the biggest advantage of investing long term. That's why when choosing your cash flow vehicle, you have to take note of how easy it is to maintain. For me what I do is invest in companies that give consistent dividends. The start is the only thing that is somewhat difficult because it requires me to study the financials of the company but after that, I just buy and buy it. Once I have a good watch list of research companies that pass my checklist, I just buy it whenever the company's stock price is undervalued. 
Let's not talk about if you use Pagibig MP2 or maybe other digital banks that give more than 6%. You don't have to do a thing. You just put money in it and it already earns for you. So that's what I want to leave for you that is watching this video. Start investing in yourself as early as possible and let compounding interest help you achieve your financial goals. With that said, I hope you've learned something from this video and if it did and still haven't clicked the like button, then I'd appreciate it if you do so before leaving. Thank you and see you in the next video.